powerful prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to uh, just uh, ask you a question before I begin. Uh, how is your prayer life? How is your prayer life? Can you say your prayer life, if you were to give your prayer life a scale from 1 to 10, just like we go to the doctor and the doctor I say, can you give us, can you give a scale of, of your pain from 1 to 10? How much is your pain? So I'm asking today, if you were to give from the scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most eh, excellent and uh, 1 being less, how would you rate your prayer life? Anybody want to share how do you rate your prayer life? Praise the name of the Lord. Huh. A 4. A six, eight. an eight. Praise the name of the Lord. So today I want us to speak about prayer. And I want to give about a, a nine principles for powerful prayer. Because there it is one thing to pray, but it's also another thing to pray powerful prayer. It's, it's not just about praying, but how much power is there in your prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And when we talk about prayer, some people may feel that prayer is a mystery. But I want to let you know that Almighty God does not need our help. But he gives us the joy of partnering with him. He is God and he is mighty. He is strong by his own power. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He does not need our help to make him greater. But when he gave us the opportunity of prayer, when he gave us this access that we can call upon his name so that what we desire to be done will be done here through us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is an opportunity for you to partner with God. Amen. So from today, I want you to understand that when we talk about prayer, prayer is not a responsibility. Prayer is partnership. Tell your neighbor partnership. partnership. Because when you pray, you are partnering with God to manifest his will on earth. Praise the name of the Lord. When you pray, you are partnering with God to bring forth his purposes in your life, in your family, in the nation, in the church, or in whichever area that you are standing in the need of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we want, us to, we want us to know today that it is not a burden. Amen. So, you know, sometimes people talk about prayer and people feel they are burdened, they feel lazy, they don't want to do it. But I want you to know that prayer is an opportunity that the Lord has given us to partner with him. It's not that he cannot do it on his own. He created the world before we were on his own. He said, let there be and it happened. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So I want you to understand that prayer is the foundation for all life-changing ministry with eternal results. If you want change, if you want change, if you're tired of the situation that you're facing, if you want to see transformation, if you want to see change, prayer is the foundation for any change to take place. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So before you try to do your own efforts and your abilities, before you try to apply your knowledge or your experience, you need to understand that the foundation for any change to take place is prayers. Amen. If you want to see change in your life, the foundation for that change will come through prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If there are things that are not going okay in your family, in your life, or in whatever area of your life, the foundation to bring change is prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And when we talk about prayer, I want you also to understand that the devil is terrified of God's power that is released through prayer. The devil is terrified of, the, of God's power because God has power. But there is a power, and that's what I want us to learn today. There is a power of God that is released through prayers. And that power of God that is released through prayer, I want to tell you the devil is terrorized. And that is why we find that many Christians have been kept away from prayer. Because when you pray, you release God's power. And the devil can do nothing but to bow. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And that's why the enemy will keep you from praying. If you dedicate your life and say, I want to pray in the night. The devil will whisper to you and tell you, 
oh, you can sleep a little longer. Can you just sleep for five more minutes? And you snooze your prayer alarm. Instead of getting up, you snooze it because the enemy is terrified of God's power that is released through prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, tell your neighbor you are a partner. Oh, you're partnering with God to release his power through prayers. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want you also to understand as we learn this, that our confidence when we pray is not in our ability to pray. I want you to gather. Your confidence should not be in your ability to pray, but our confidence should be in God's ability to answer those prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when we pray, one thing is sure, that God answers prayers. I remember one time a few years ago, we went for a meeting and it was the first day of the meeting and I had some things I was struggling with. And I remember the first speaker who spoke uh, during the first opening night, he spoke and said, I just want to make this statement. I want to make this statement and say that God does nothing but accept answer prayers. And he continued, he said, God does nothing except answer prayer. And so in this meeting, what we are going to do, we are going to make sure that God is busy by praying so that he answer the prayer. Because God does nothing except answer prayer. And I still remember that sermon or that statement because it had changed my life that night. I remember going home. I was in the bus and I said, oh my goodness. I realized that some of the things I was struggling with, I realized that some of the things I did not have. It is not because God did not want to give me, but it is because I never asked. I never prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I got home that night, I told my kids, I told them nobody should disturb me because from my hair to my toe, from everything I have ever desired, tonight I realize I am busy praying for other people, but these things that are troubling me, I have never taken them to God in prayer. And today I realize that God does nothing except answer prayers. So tonight I'm making sure that God is answering my prayers. And I remember that night very well because I asked God for even what might seem silly at the time. I told God, God, I pray that you may give me shoes. I pray, God, that you may give me clothes. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That time I just had a change of two clothes. I had one pair of shoes that I was given by somebody else. I had to put newspaper in so that it fit. And I was struggling and I could pray with other people and God could do, God could heal the sick. God could bring restoration. God could bring deliverance. But I was struggling in my personal life. I was struggling with poverty. I was so oppressed by poverty, praise the name of the Lord, mm -hmm. to the extent that sometimes we didn't have anything to eat. But from that night, I realized that God does nothing except answer prayer. And I remember kneeling down that night and praying and declaring, Lord, I know there are even houses you can give me. I refuse to live in, a, in, a, in, in this house because the, the house we were living in, was a disgrace. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I remember I wanted to quit in a position of leadership because we had agreed that every leader should give a certain amount of money. And we had agreed in the month of January. And this time we are talking about it was August. Everybody else had given their portion. I had not given I did not have anything. And so I had decided in my mind, you know what? I am going to go and quit and say I don't deserve to be a leader because I can't even honor the pledge that we agreed about. I was so oppressed. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I remember that night as I was praying, I told God, you put me in that position of leadership because you could see I can be a leader. But Lord, even the money that I need to give, I declare that I'm not quitting because, Father, I ask of you, give me the money by tomorrow. Praise the name of the Lord. Because the deadline was hitting. And so the following morning, 
woke up and we were get, I was getting ready to go for the meeting. I didn't even have enough money to take me from the village to the town where the meeting was. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going, I'm speaking this and I know this testimony is going to encourage somebody because God has the ability to answer your prayers. Amen. It doesn't matter what it might see. It might seem like small insignificant thing, but that night changed my prayer life. Because I understood that it is my confidence is not in my ability to pray, but my confidence should be in God's ability to answer my prayer. And let me tell you, it was like God was waiting for me to pray. Because the following morning, I am there, I'm, I'm standing uh, in, a, in a shop, and I'm, I'm there, uh, I'm waiting for people to go, because I want to... I want to I wanna get some, 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 some flour without paying, you know, that's what I want. I want to tell the shopkeeper, you know what, I will pay when I get money. So I'm waiting for the people to move uh, and I'll be the last one. And, I, then, I, and as I was waiting there, I got a call and the pastor was calling me from the meeting and asked me, you said we are not going to sing today. I said, why? You are not even here. Why, why are you late? And I remember telling the pastor, you know what? I am trusting God for bus fare, but I will eventually get there. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Somebody, a drunkard, he was drunk, was listening to my phone call. And he said, Pastor, you are saying you don't have money to go preach. What will God do to us? Take this money. Even if I have not received Jesus, go preach to those who want to receive Jesus. And he gave me 200 shillings, Kenya shillings. Praise the name of the Lord. And that was the beginning of miracles that day. So instead of borrowing flour, I had money to pay for it. And I had money to go to the meeting. And when I got to the meeting, I found this lady who was waiting for me. She had gone to the bank and she had by the voice of the Lord, which was so clear. Take out this a certain amount of money. My servant needed it. And it was the first time I saw such an amount of money that was called by my name. She had put it in an envelope. 18,000 Kenya shillings. Guess what? It was enough for me to pay my pledge. So I continued staying in the leadership. It was enough for me to pay for clothes and everything I had prayed for the previous night. And from that night, I discovered that the problem we have is not that we don't have. It's not that God does not want to give us. But the problem we have is that we don't want to pray about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you are a partner. Oh, yes. The Lord has invited you into partnership. When the Lord says you pray, it is about partnering with him so that his power will be manifested. So I want us to learn nine things or nine principles that help us to pray powerfully or to pray powerful prayers. Uh, number one, proper posture. You know what is a posture? Huh? Proper posture. Okay. And I want to ask you a question. In case you got an opportunity to visit the other house, other office, how would you go? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes when we pray, it is good to remind ourselves who we are addressing. Did you feel that sense of awe uh, when you thought about yourself in that other office? Yeah? Or maybe you've been invited to go to the, to the Queen's Palace. Can you feel that sense of awe uh, and wow, you feel like you need to be in your best behavior. You need to be in your best posture. You're standing upright. Uh, you, you, if you're going before a queen, you need to know how to curtsy. Even if you don't know, you, you need to train. Can you feel that sense of awe? Uh, Praise the name of the Lord. When we talk about the, the proper posture, we are talking about reminding ourselves who we are addressing. When we go before the Lord in prayer, we are speaking to Yahweh, the great I am. Praise the name of the Lord. We are speaking to Jehovah Adonai, 
the Lord and the master of the universe. We are speaking to Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who is your provider. We are speaking to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God who is your healer. We are speaking to Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, our peace. Praise the name of the Lord. We are speaking to Jehovah El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough, our all sufficiency. We are speaking to Jehovah Elio Elion, the God of the final word. I can name more and more names that describe who God is, but I want us to understand that one principle of powerful prayer is proper posture. Get to know who, who you are addressing. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, if you go before your boss, because you know he has the power to withdraw your paycheck, you don't just go disrespectfully. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If you are to meet the governor of this, uh, of this state, you don't just go and talk anyhow. We go with respect. But my question is, if we can give respect to people, who are human beings like us just because of their position of power, because of the authority they carry, or because of their status on earth? How much more when we go before the Lord are we supposed to have the proper posture? Because we are not just going before any man. We are going before Yahweh, the great I am. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, partner, partner in with God. God is not our age mate. Hello? Hello. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He is God. If we can be in our best behavior when we are meeting with the, with the diplomats or here or not, how about this God who is mighty, who is the creator of the universe, who has the final word concerning us? How much more when we go before him, shouldn't we give him the proper posture? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we have the proper posture, and exalt him in his rightful place above everything else, then we develop the proper perspective. Number two is proper perspective. And I want you to understand that when you have this proper posture, it is the one that leads you to have the proper perspective. Because if you don't have the proper posture, that means you don't understand who you are addressing in your prayers. Hallelujah. You're like, hey, God, I up there. Huh? Like, you want to say, hey, man. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But when we go with a proper posture, when we understand who we are addressing, we develop proper perspective. And when I talk about proper perspective, I'm talking about seeing things from God's point of view. Hey, not from your point of view, not from the position or the situation that you are in. But the proper perspective is seeing things. Hallelujah. From God's point of view. Exodus 9 verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says, Let my people go. When Moses approached Pharaoh, he was reminded of a God that can make a bush burn and not be consumed. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He had had an experience with this God. Remember the burning bush? Mm -hmm. So because he had an experience and when he had this experience, the Lord told him, take off your shoes. The place you're standing is holy. He took off his shoes and he was in proper posture. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And being in the proper posture, he gained the proper perspective. So when he was going to face Pharaoh, he was not facing Pharaoh with fear. He was not facing Pharaoh uh, intimidated by the people that are around him, intimidated by the power that he has emitted. No, he was confident because he could see things from God's point of view. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We also find this in David. 
in the book of 1 Samuel 17, 43 to 47. You can just write, we are going to read first because I have nine principles. And allow me to teach you all these principles today. Because we, we want to get into the area of powerful prayers, amen, in our lives. I want to start here in testimony that you prayed and because of the power of God that was released through those prayers, we want to start here in testimonies. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, and the Philistine cast David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Then David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you. Listen to David's statement. He's saying, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down. I will cut off your head. This very day, I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here today will know that it is not by sword, or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hands. Listen to David. David has a confident faith and was reminded of God's faithfulness from the lion and the bear. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, the right perspective, the proper perspective is developed by your experience of how God has done in the past. So you know David had an experience. The lion came. He killed it with his bare hands. Who helped him? The Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The bear came. He was able to kill it with his bare hands. Who helped him? The Lord. And so now when he is facing this Philistine, the Goliath, he is not looking as a boy. You know he was a boy then? He was still a young boy. So he was not using his eyes as a boy. You know, even the Goriath looked at David and he felt like really humiliated. Is it there a man who is strong enough, maybe trained in battle, who can fight with me? His pride was injured. But one thing he did know is that David was coming against him in the name of the Lord. And he understood what his God is capable of doing. And so instead of seeing Goriath a giant to intimidate him, he just saw this big target that he cannot miss with a stone. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor proper perspective. Proper perspective. When we understand about the proper perspective, seeing things from God's point of view, we understand that God is not the least bit concerned with our humanly impossible odds. You know, there are so many humanly impossible odds against us sometimes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, there are those things you listen and you're like, humanly speaking, it is impossible. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, you get some diagnosis and the doctor says there is no cure. What we can just do is treat. We can just manage. So humanly speaking, it is impossible. But God is not least concerned with those humanly impossible odds. He is least concerned. He relishes the opportunity to do something so great and so mighty so that he manifests his glory. Praise the name of the Lord. And I always say, it is always good to do what is humanly possible. And we leave God to do that? Impossible. How do we do that? By prayer. When we have the right perspective, we may look at, this, at a situation and we see, humanly speaking, this is not possible. But with God, because there are no impossibilities with him, I will partner with God. I will trust in his ability to answer the prayers. I will trust in his ability to bring himself glory through this situation. So I will pray. Anyway, praise the name of the Lord. In Judges chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. I want you to see this about Gideon. Gideon 
and 32,000 Israelites are facing 300,000 Midianites. The odds are 10 to 1. Ratio is 10 to 1. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. <laughs> Already they are over, overpowered and God is saying, you have too many men. <laughs> and I cannot deliver Midian into thy hands. And they will boast it was our own strength that saved us. Now announce to the army, anyone who is afraid may go home. The army that he has, 32,000, in ratio, it is 10 to 1 because the Midianites are 300,000. And yet God is saying they are too many. Can you stand and say, everybody who is afraid, go home. You know, I read that and I'm like, wow. And the men who are afraid left, they went home. Eventually, only 300 soldiers remained. To face the 300,000. So the ratio now goes to a thousand is to one. Are we still together here? Yeah. A thousand is to wow. one. And God is so confident in his ability and power. That even if the ratio is a thousand in to one. He is able to conquer and surely they got the victory. Can you imagine 300 men? Of, uh, against 300,000 men and who came home with a victory? The 300 men came home with a victory. That is the God I'm talking about Amen. who defies all odds. So as we partner in, with him in prayer, remember you are there so that his power may be revealed through your prayers. Amen. Jeremiah 32 verse 27, this is one of my favorite verses. I would like you to memorize this when you are praying and when you feel like uh, you, 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 you're getting uh, discouraged, I want you to memorize this. Jeremiah 32 verse 27, it says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Powerful statement. Powerful statement. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you look at a situation and it looks like it's challenging you, I want you to quote Jeremiah 32 verse 27. It says that I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything? Anything mean anything? Anything? Is there anything to hurt for me? Isaiah 59 and verse 1 says, Behold, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save, nor is his ear deaf to hear you when you call. That time you feel like it's useless to pray, remind the enemy, remind yourself this, that his ears are not deaf, that they cannot hear you when you call. His arm is not weak or is not short to save you. Praise the name of the Lord. So when we talk about proper perspective, we can summarize it in this statement. My statements... Or my circumstances or my situation says this. But God says this. Amen? Amen? Always put them in balance. What is your situation saying? And what is God saying? Put it in a weighing scale. Amen? Amen. My, my current situation is saying this. But my God is saying this. And always remember that God will always have the final word. So it doesn't matter what the situation is saying. Always remember that God will have the final word. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So we have learned about a proper perspective. Number three, proper priority. Proper priority. And when I talk about proper priority, I'm talking about giving God and prayer the importance it deserves in our lives. Jeremiah 29 verse 12 to 13 says, Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. 
So, in everything that you have, now this is question number two. Remember I asked you a question number one? In everything that you have to do, in all the responsibilities that you have, which position is prayer? You're going to work, you're going to school, uh, you've got social life, you got all this. What number is prayer? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Proper priority. You shall call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. With all your heart means you have given God the first priority. He is top. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes we try things out. We try them out and then we go pray. <laughs> when we hit rock bottom, after trying everything out, that's when you say, oh, by the way, pastor said we can pray. That's when you're going to, to pray. But for you to experience these powerful prayer points, you need to understand proper priority. Before you even call me and say, pastor, can you pray for me? You need to have prayed first. I'm not saying don't call me to pray. But before you even call me, before you feel like when you pray, it's not going to work, pray first. Because we have a promise that when we call, he will answer us. When we seek him with all our heart, he will be found. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, say pray, pray. and seek my face and turn from their wickedness, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Amen. This is a promise. If my people, when you hear if, it means there is a possibility that his people might not pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And that is where it, there is an Eve. Eve means there is a condition. You are his people. You are his children. But we have a condition. For us to experience power. The power of God that is released through prayers. We have to do what we need to do. We need to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So give prayer proper priority. Before you call on your friends and ask them to help you out, pray. Take that need to God in prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Before you think that you're going to seek consultation, pray. I'm not saying it's wrong to seek consultation. But give prayer proper priority. And number four, pronounce praise. Pronounce praise. We learned this when we were dealing with the topic of praise. So I'm not going to dwell on this. Uh, Psalms 22 verse 3, the Bible says, God inhabits the praises of his people. Psalms 149 verse 6, it says, Praise is a weapon, and it routes the enemy. Uh, we know the story in Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to 26. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and other prisoners was, were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prisons was shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone chains came loose. Mark this or write this. Praying and praising always brings God's power on the scene. Praying and praising. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So in, 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 in short, I'm saying incorporate your prayers with praise. praise. Incorporate prayer with praise. Praise. There is so much power in praise. When you mix prayers and praise, there is such a power that is released. 
because God inhabits the praises of his people. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. If you are in a situation and it is a challenging situation and instead of murmuring and complaining, you start giving God the glory and praising him. Even if there are people who had captured you, they'll think you're crazy. And in the midst of praising the Lord and just worshiping the Lord, guess what? He comes down. This is what happened to Paul and Silas. They are, they are bound in prison. But instead of complaining that they are in prison, they started praying and praising. They were singing the hymns. And the Bible says that the other prisoners were just listening. Because they were wondering, what kind of people are this? We have been beaten. We have been flogged. We are chained. And, but they decided we might be chained. Our hands are chained. Our feet are chained. But our mouth is not chained. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So what are we going to do? We're going to praise. They started singing the praises. And suddenly, because God inhabits the praises of his people. If you want an environment to change, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because immediately praise brings down him himself. He comes down and inhabits that praise. It creates an atmosphere of the presence of God. And one thing I know is that the enemy and God cannot coexist. Light and darkness cannot coexist. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So instead of even using so much energy trying to fight and fight and say, you devil, come out of here. I am going to praise God because I know the moment that the Lord comes, the devil has no choice but to flee because he cannot live in the same place with my God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you know, when you understand this secret of praise, your life changes. You walk with power. Because you're not walking alone. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And as we have learned in Psalms 1, but it's a praise is a weapon. When you are praising, oh, let me tell you, if the Lord can open your eyes to see what is happening in the spiritual realm, you cause havoc. You know that is what happened with the walls of Jericho? On the last day, on the seventh round, they walked around shouting, praising, and confusion setting in the camp of the enemies. The walls started to fall. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Are you facing a challenge that looks like a wall? Praise the Lord. Come on, tell your neighbor partner, praise the Lord. Amen. Number five, for us to experience power, the power in prayer, practice purity. Practice purity. Psalms 24 verse 4, it talks about who can ascend. The to, the, to the mountain of the Lord. And it talks about a clean heart and a pure heart. Sometimes it's not that our prayers are ineffective, but sometimes it's because we have clogged our life with that sin. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. David spoke about this in Psalm 66 and verse 18, and he said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear my prayer. What does regarding iniquity mean? Regarding iniquity means wallowing in sin. You know, like, you know this is sin. You know it is wrong, but you're not quitting. You're still there. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's like, let me use this phrase. It's like a pig. You know, the Bible says that even if you put, you, 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 you clean a pig and put a beautiful ring on it, it still goes back to the, to the mark. So when we talk about regarding iniquity, we are talking about knowing very well this is wrong. Amen. We have been forgiven sins. We have been cleansed. We have been pardoned our, our, our iniquities. But why should we keep on messing up after receiving the forgiveness of sin? And then we keep on messing up and we want, when we pray, God's power to manifest. Is it possible? No. no. We want when we praise the Lord to 
to come and inhabit. But we are one law in sin. We are regarding iniquity. I pray today that if there is any sin we are regarding in, any iniquity, that the Lord will cleanse us and we will have no desire to continue sinning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Practice purity. First John 3, 21 says, Dear children, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask. If our hearts do not condemn us. You know, when we sin, our hearts, if your, if your conscience is alive, amen, it will con the Holy Spirit will convince you, you did wrong. You will feel condemned within you. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so John is saying, if our hearts do not condemn us, if you are in that place where there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, you have received the forgiveness of, of sin, and you have purposed within your life to practice purity, then we can confidently say, like John is saying, that if our hearts do not condemn us, we have this confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask, anything. We ask because we obey his command and we do what pleases him. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When we talk about practicing purity, it means we are obeying the commands of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And walking in his ways. Partner, I've been calling you partner. You know what? Partnership is not about one it's not a one way street praise the name of the lord mm -hmm. there is your responsibility we want god to answer our prayers we want to experience this power but this principle number five it is a must we have to practice purity praise the name of the lord mm -hmm. because if we are clogged up with impurities it restricts, it restricts the full measure of God's power to be manifested. It is not that God is not powerful. But if we keep on regarding iniquity, we are not allowing God's power to be fully manifested. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. It says, our purity and righteousness does not come from within ourselves but only comes from abiding in Christ. You know what is abiding? Abiding is dwelling. It is staying there, not living. Abiding in Christ. Amen. Not deciding today I belong to Christ and tomorrow I don't think so. Abiding in Christ. That is where our righteousness comes from. We have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we abide in Christ, it's just like we said the other time, that question we asked, what would Jesus do? Praise the name of the Lord. Because you are in him and Him he is, and he is in, in us. So abiding in Christ means even before you take any course of action, you are conscious within yourself because you want to practice purity. What would Jesus do? And thus our righteousness comes through abiding in Christ. Number six. Number six, persevere with persistent. Persevere. With persistence. Persevere. You know, sometimes why we quit before we receiving the, the, the answer to our prayers because it took it took to, too long. Longer than we than we expected. I'm saying number six, persevere. With persistence, persevere. Persevere means endure. Endure with persistence. Don't just endure, but endure with persistence. There are some people who are just enduring and they're doing nothing about it. But when we talk about the principles of powerful prayer, you persevere. Yes, you're going through a hard time. You persevere, but you are persistent. You are still seeking. You are still calling. Praise the name of the Lord. And we find that about the woman in Luke 18 verse 1 to 8. During the VBS patients, I was acting as that woman who kept going to the judge. Remember that play? Yeah. yeah? That woman who kept going to...
to the judge and saying, oh, please, judge, please hear my case, hear my case. Every day, the woman was persevering. That play was very good because we could see her oppressors in the play. They were coming and disturbing her and oppressing her and giving her an ultimatum. You have to leave. You have to do this. And every morning, she could go to the judge and say, please, listen to my case. And the judge never bothered with her. But she persevered persistently. She continued to go. Until one day, the judge says, this woman will not let leave me alone. She keeps on coming. Hallelujah. When we talk about powerful prayer, we are talking about persevering with persistence. You persist. Even if you had prayed yesterday, pray today. Even if you had even fasted, fast again. Praise the name of the Lord. Even if you had said it as a prayer issue in the prayer line, say it again. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Even if you prayed at lunchtime, you can pray at 3 o'clock. Hallelujah. Amen. Persistence. Keep on praying. The Bible says that men ought to pray and not to faint. We ought to keep praying. Hallelujah. Amen. There is one prayer issue in my prayer book that I have prayed for for the last now 19 years. And every year... When I'm, I'm writing my, my prayer issues for the year, when it is not yet done, I carry it forward. And I keep on persisting. As I was writing this sermon yesterday, I remembered that issue and I said, God, I 19 years and I'm counting, but I am still trusting that you will do it. I am still waiting for you, Lord, in this area. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, persistence. Persistence. <coughs> Isaiah 62 verse 6 and 7 says, Let they who call upon the Lord give him no rest until he comes and establishes Jerusalem and make her a praise on earth. Let all who call the Lord. Are you the one the Lord is saying? Are you one of those who call the Lord? So let those who call the Lord give him no rest. Meaning that every time Oh, at the throne, he can hear your prayer. You're like, God, I am still here in the need of this prayer. I still need your, your power manifested in this area. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I don't know what is it that you have been praying for, but we can persevere in persistence. We can continue calling upon the name of the Lord, whether it is done today or it will be done 10 years. Can you think about Abraham? He waited 25 years. He received a promise, but he continued waiting. He continued trusting in the Lord. You think you have waited for long? Hallelujah. Do you think it is time to quit and give up? No. It is time to continue, persevere with persistence. Ephesians 6 verse 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert. Pray without season for all the saints. You know what pray without season means? Pray without stopping. Don't stop. Tell your neighbor, don't stop. Don't stop. No, don't stop. Yes, you prayed. God didn't do it yesterday. That does not give you the certificate to stop. Don't stop. One of the most important principles of powerful prayer is persevere with persistence. persistence. John chapter 8 verse 44 says, The devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he's, he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of all lies. I wanted to put this in there because one of the many things that makes us not persist is because we listen to the devil's lies. But I want you to know today that when the devil tells you that your prayers are not working, tell him he's a liar and pray even harder. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The reason why I put that there, it is because we stop praying because we give ears to what the devil is saying. But I want you to understand that there is no language he knows any other language. He cannot even speak the truth. 
when the devil speaks to you and tells you you cannot, you are it's not possible. Just know automatically it is the opposite. If you're saying you cannot, it means you can. Because his language is lies. He just speaks lies. Are we together so far? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The answer and the breakthrough you seek may be closer. But the enemy makes you to stop by whispering to you. I know I'm speaking to somebody who had stopped praying about something. But I have come to tell you, whatever made you stop, whatever lies the devil told you, that is a lie. That is a lie. Because the devil can only speak lies. Praise the name of the Lord. I know at one time, I, I remember the issue I'm talking about. I remember one time being challenged within me and I asked myself, could I be praying against the will of God? Could it not be so? You know, you start doubting yourself. But then when I understand that whatever the devil says is a lie, I knew I will keep on praying because the God who promised is faithful. And his promises are yes and amen. amen. Uh, we are not going to read this, but you can go home and read Matthew 15 from verse 21 to 28. It talks about this Canaanite woman. Is that she's the lady who was told that the, the child's bread cannot be given to a dog. But she left Jesus' feet with healing. She persisted. Amen. Amen. They tried to chase her away. She continued persisting because she knew what she was seeking. Amen. Amen. Matthew 17 verse 20. It talks about your faith. If you have the faith of a, the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, be moved and it shall be moved. Sometimes we think it is our faith that maybe you don't have enough faith. Maybe you can God will do it next time. No. Even if your faith is the size of a mustard seed, that one is enough. Keep on praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Have you ever thought about this? Question number three. Sometimes when we pray, we circumstances get worse. Before they get better. Anybody gone through that? Yeah. When you pray, instead of this getting better, they get, worse. they get worse before they get better. Have you ever gone through that? Yes. Yes. Sometimes it is a, it's like a test of how bad do you want it. Because when it gets worse and you just quit, you stop praying, you realize that sometimes it goes back to normal. I remember specifically this lady we were praying with every Wednesday. We could meet in the church and pray with her. Her husband was, was suffering from alcoholism. And she, he could come home drunk and cause a lot of havoc. And I remember we could meet and pray. I told this lady, you know what? These demons, we're going to really give a sacrifice. We are going to, to pray. We will be meeting on Wednesday and holding hands and praying and fasting. Guess what? The more we prayed, the guy could not drink from Monday to Tuesday. He didn't drink from Thursday to Sunday. But that Wednesday we prayed, he would come home really drunk and cause havoc. And I remember one time, that lady noticed the pattern. She came to me and said, Pastor, today we are not praying. I asked her why. Because I realized when we pray, that's when it happens. Why don't we just stop praying? And, and he wouldn't even drink. And she was so discouraged. I told her, you know what? I told her in my mother language, on a kwaneika yadari. It means even when 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 the the, the, the kicks of a dime. <laughs> How do you translate that? I don't know. I'll try to explain to you later. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. But if an animal is dying, it's a it kicks. So I told the I told I told her, you know what? The devil knows what we are doing. It means that our prayers are effective we will not stop praying we will keep praying and let me tell you we prayed for nine months and eventually that man gave his life to jesus we never quit but every wednesday we prayed <laughs> it got us praise the name of the lord mm -hmm. so if you had answered that question yes <clears throat> that when you pray some things instead of getting better they get worse it means your prayers are working so you should continue praying hallelujah Amen. I think I'm going to stop there. Which number are we in? Six. Six.
can I continue with the three next Sunday? Okay. Oh, you yeah, because our time is far much gone. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm. Let's stand on our feet. I have gone beyond with so many minutes that let's go practice what we have learned now. Okay. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's okay. pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you for your grace. We thank you for what you have taught us today about principles of powerful prayers. We pray that we'll continue to pray without season, O oh God. We pray that you're going to help us to practice purity in the name of Jesus. We pray that you're going to help us, Lord, even to have the proper posture, proper perspective, O oh God. We are going to continue pronouncing praise in our prayers in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you're going to help us, Lord, to persevere with persistence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you even for those who are listening to us online, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that their prayer life is going to change. You will continue adding more power in their prayer life in the name of Jesus because you've made us realize today that we are partners with you. You want us to partner with you, Lord, that you may manifest your power that is through prayer in Jesus' name. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 We'll continue next Sunday with the remaining three. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless us. May the Lord God bless you. Amen.